One thing that confuses many in the Middle East is why Christians in the West have such a strong support of Israel. This is partly because the story of Israel is central to the story of the Bible, and because we read about the life of Jacob, Moses, David, Solomon, and the prophets. Many people assume that because Jesus was crucified by the Jewish leaders of his day working with the Romans, this would be the cause of an irreparable rift between Christians and Jews. And while people who call themselves Christians have a long and sordid history of persecution and killing Jews, the Bible will always pull us back to having a hopeful view for the future of the Jewish people. Romans 11.28 says, As regards to the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as regards to election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers, for the gifts and the calling of God, they are irrevocable. For just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. This means Christians have a long-term hope for the Jewish people, they will embrace Jesus as the Jewish Messiah. Yes, Jewish friends, we think what we believe is true, and we want you to believe it too. And I know that that hurts you. But you think what you believe is true, and you don't care if we believe it or not, and that hurts us. So Christians are supposed to have a love for the Jewish people that is unconditional. There is, however, a bad kind of unconditional love, which is the kind of love a middle school boy has for his crush, which is a blind idealization that turns a real woman into a fictional character. The good kind of unconditional love is the kind that is committed to someone's well-being despite their flaws, because of your belief in who they're supposed to be, of who that person can be, like the love of a parent or a healthy marriage. This type of love can engage with a person's flaws without writing off their future. This love is possible because you also are a flawed person who is nevertheless loved by God. This is the type of love that compels Christians to pray for Israel, visit Israel, invest in Israel, and have long-term hope for Israel. But what does this mean for the Palestinians? One unfortunate side effect of Christian love for Israel is that the Palestinians come to represent NPCs, or the boyfriend you hope your daughter stops dating, or the slow driver in front of you when you're late for work. If Israel's well-being is good for the world, then something needs to be done about this obstacle. But what does God say? Does God hate the Palestinians? Does he want them to leave? Does he want them to die? Did you know that the Bible actually promises hope for the Palestinians? The book of Zechariah is full of prophecies about the future of Israel and the future of the world. One of the most important parts is in Zechariah 9, where he describes the Messiah riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, speaking peace to the nations and spreading knowledge of God throughout the world. Right before this, Zechariah says, I will cut off the pride of Philistia. I will take away its blood from its mouth and its abominations from between its teeth. It too shall be a remnant for our God. It shall be like a clan in Judah, and Ekron shall be like the Jebusites. Then I'll encamp at my house as a guard, so that none shall march to and fro, no oppressor shall again march over them. For now I see with my own eyes. What does this mean? Firstly, it talks about breaking Philistia's pride. And don't take this personally, Palestinians. God hates pride wherever he sees it, including in Israel. When God says he'll take away the blood from its mouth and remove the abominations from its teeth, it means he's going to take away the sin from the Palestinians that displease him. But again, this isn't singling out Palestine. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Jesus taught that evil comes from every human heart. That means all the evil you see in this current conflict lives somewhere inside you too. So watch yourselves. Despite that, it then says, it too shall be a remnant for our God. The word remnant is used time and time again to describe the true believers from the people of Israel who God will protect, prosper, and bless. To be a clan in Judah means there is no way to be closer to the Jewish people. And the Jebusites were a Canaanite group who initially had conflict with Israel, yet remained in the land, worshipped the God of Israel, and maintained their distinct cultural identity. This means that the Palestinians will be a full part of God's people, and no oppressor shall again march over them. This means God's plan is for a peaceful, brotherly relationship between Israel and Palestine. Sorry jihadists, ultra-Orthodox settlers, and leftist revolutionaries. Violent revolution is not how this whole thing ends. It starts with God's kingdom growing heart by heart, mind by mind, soul by soul, and ends with God forgiving sin, healing the wounds, and charting the course to a future more glorious than anyone can imagine. This doesn't mean there won't be hard days. This doesn't mean we won't see more war. Jesus suffered and died on the way to his resurrection. What it does mean is that it's not time to hide in a bunker and wait for the end of the world. 
it's time to roll up our sleeves and invest in the future. If God loves the Palestinians, we should love the Palestinians. If God has a plan for the Palestinians, then we should have hope for the Palestinians. But what can you do? Every Christian can be praying for the Palestinians. And there are probably Palestinians where you live. Make friends with them. Show hospitality to them. Enjoy their hospitality because they will show it to you. Work to make them more than a statistic in your imagination. Maybe when you visit Israel, you visit Palestinian towns, meet the locals, enjoy the food and spend time with people. Maybe you invest in Palestinian businesses or start your own business that invests in Palestine. Perhaps this will be what lays the groundwork for peace one day. So the Palestinians listening may ask, love, money, investment sounds great, but ultimately you want us to convert to Christianity. Yes, but don't be intimidated. We've been investing in Israel for 75 years. Look at how few people have actually converted. We'll always want you to believe what we believe. But God does not want that to be a condition of us loving you. So Christians, let's move beyond reacting to the 24-hour news cycle and start having an outlook of hope and faith because we trust God's word. And let's show up accordingly in a world that needs Jesus more than ever.